These are first and second round games on Saturday and Monday, and the overall number one seed is Gonzaga. This is our team, our time, our town. Zags named overall number one seed in Selection Sunday for the first time in team history. Seeing their determination and you know, their motivation, you know, they're just, they're just an inspiration to watch. Plus, with coronavirus restrictions in place, fans aren't able to go to Indiana to enjoy the game. How one Zag fan is supporting the hometown team all while going through a battle of his own. After enjoying sunshine and beautifully mild temperatures today, I'm tracking some cooler weather and some showers to start your week. These are first and second round games on Saturday and Monday, and the overall number one seed is Gonzaga. Well, there you have it. Selection Sunday is normally a day of suspense, but for Gonzaga fans, it was a pretty comfortable day. Good evening. Thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. Brenna Green joins us now to tell us about both Gonzaga and Eastern Washington's placement in the bracket. Yeah, when a team is ranked number one in the country from the beginning of the season until the end, their seed in the NCAA tournament is pretty obvious. For the first time in program history, the Gonzaga Bulldogs are the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Here's some video of their reaction today. Appropriate round of applause. They then immediately got on a bus, headed for the Spokane Airport, and got on a plane for Indianapolis. Gonzaga will take on the winner of Appalachian State and Norfolk State on Saturday. That game will be at 6.20 p.m. on TBS. Overall, Gonzaga's region must have them feeling some deja vu. The second seed in the West region is Iowa, who the Zags beat in December. The third seed is Kansas, who the Bulldogs beat in November. And the fourth seed is Virginia, who Gonzaga also beat in December. This is really rare to see a region like this. The Zags have got to have confidence going up against teams like this that they've already played and won against once. Speaking of the West region, that's where the Eastern Washington Eagles are as well. They were given a 14 seed and will take on Kansas on Saturday at 1015 AM on TBS. Something to keep an eye on with Kansas. They have had COVID issues this past week, which has forced them to withdraw from the Big 12 tournament. If they continue to have problems, Eastern may have to play a replacement team. Eastern is already in Indy and in quarantine, but they did get to watch their name get announced on the selection show as a team together. See them excited for it and see that when their name was called and you know their their excitement and jumping up and down before they you know I don't think I'll calculate that they had to play Kansas. I just think they're happy they got their name called. You know it's fun to see. Krem's Northern Quest Resort and Casino March Bracket Challenge is now up online at Krem.com. If you pick a perfect bracket, you could win a million dollars. If you win the contest locally, you could win one night stay at Northern Quest, plus a $50 gift card to Epic, Northern Quest Sports Bar, and a $50 gift card to Windfall, Northern Quest's home and lifestyle store. Oh, and the players who beat out my score each round will be entered to win two large Papa Murphy's pepperoni pizzas. We did not get to hear from Gonzaga today because they immediately got on that plane after the selection show. We're hoping to hear from them later on this week. Back to you. Well, in the pandemic, show, if it's shown us anything through basketball, it's that basketball runs deep in the DNA of Zag fans. And for one Zag fan, it's almost everything. Krem 2's Brandon T. Jones shares just how important this team is to its supporters. The basketball teams here at Gonzaga represent so much more than an entire region. With the tournament starting up, that passion and the presence can be felt more than ever on every single corner of the United States. How excited are you for March Madness this year? You know, I am very excited for March Madness this year since it was canceled last year, of course with the pandemic and the way the Zags have been playing this year. Basketball isn't just a sport, it's a way of life for Zags fans. Every game that's played and cheered on is an opportunity to be a part of a larger community. I was fortunate to be at the last two Sweet 16 games that the Zags were in. Dwayne Wilson became a fan 25 years ago when he moved to Spokane. Anytime he has the chance to attend a game, he'll always be there, and he now considers himself an advocate for the squad, but that's not the only thing he's passionate about. It's a rare inherited genetic disease 
and it's a muscle weakness, a type of muscular dystrophy. In 2018, Dwayne was officially diagnosed with Pompe disease. Every two weeks, he has to get transfusions to slow down the muscle weakness progression. The enzymes he receives help stop the breakdown of his muscles, and physical therapy helps him with his walking. So when we have the infusions, we say we're getting our muscle juice. Bringing awareness to the disease is just as important to him as supporting the Zags. He often looks at the work they put in to help him get through his treatments. Um, you know, watching the Zags, seeing their determination and you know, their motivation, you know, they're just, they're just an inspiration to watch. Dwayne now lives in Southern California, but his love for the Zags remains true. Oftentimes he'll show up to his doctor's office rocking GU gear. Although watching the tournament will be different this year because of protocols in place at the games, he'll still be connected with the fan base and is traveling up to Spokane this week for his birthday. So we'll be watching them on TV, cheering them on, and uh, hoping for them to advance one game at a time. From Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crim2 News. On to a developing story tonight. One person died after an incident at Schweitzer Mountain on Friday. A spokesperson confirmed the person was skiing when the incident happened. They were then life flighted to a hospital where they passed away. The spokesperson did not confirm where the incident was or the nature of their injuries. They also didn't release the circumstances leading up to the situation. Now, of course, this is a developing story. We will be sure to bring you the latest information as soon as it comes in. To your other top headlines now, protests overnight in Seattle and Portland with two very different scenes. In Seattle, a march to mark the one year anniversary of the death of Breonna Taylor turned destructive. Several people were arrested last night for vandalizing businesses and assaulting a police officer. Police sent out photos of some of the damage and at least 13 people have been arrested. Meantime, over in Portland, people gathered for an autonomous demonstration against the Department of Homeland Security officers in Portland. A large group gathered outside the Justice Center and remained mostly peaceful. Last night's demonstration in Portland follows two nights of destruction and arrest. <laughs> All right, to weather now. Well, we enjoyed plenty of sunshine today, but it sounds like we're in for a little gloomier weather to start the week. Meteorologist Michelle Boss joining us now live from home. Michelle, what's in store for the work week? Well, we were so spoiled this weekend, of course, seeing beautiful sunshine Saturday and Weren't Sunday, we? a high temperature of 60 degrees. It's only the second 60 degree day of the year. We are going to start our work week on a little bit of a different note. It's going to be a little bit cooler as we check out Storm Tracker 2 satellite and radar. You can already see uh, pretty thick clouds across eastern Washington and north Idaho. And now we're starting to see a little bit of precipitation, just some light rain right now across parts of central Washington. Moses Lake has seen a sprinkle this evening. Temperatures are still relatively mild. We are still ahead of a cold front that's going to be pushing through tomorrow morning. So 46 degrees right now in Spokane, 45 in Coeur d'Alene and still in the 50s in Moses Lake and Othello 54 in Lewiston. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Temperatures will stay well above freezing overnight, but it does look like we will see some rain showers moving in towards the early morning hours, so you'll likely see some wet roads tomorrow morning. We're looking at a much cooler high of only 48 degrees tomorrow, a little bit breezy and a few morning rain showers, but we should bounce back pretty quickly, looking at mostly cloudy skies on Tuesday, 50 degrees, and we should be back up into the mid-50s with partly cloudy skies for St. Patrick's Day. The number of coronavirus cases administered in the U.S. is rising and a new sense of normalcy is on the horizon. Every week, approximately 2.5 million shots are getting into arms across the nation and about one in five Americans have already received at least one dose. Now health experts are suggesting that the rise in vaccinations could lead to things getting back to normal. When we're there and we have a good proportion of the people vaccinated, I think you're going to see weddings in the normal way that we've seen it within a reasonable period of time. The CDC says nearly 70 million Americans have received at least one COVID-19 shot, while close to 37 million are fully vaccinated. Well, huge news from the governor's office this week. The entire state will be moving to phase three starting March 22nd. Tomorrow on Up With Krem, we're talking live to Mayor Nadine Woodward about the decision. In the meantime, starting Wednesday, more people will be eligible for COVID vaccines here in Washington. And that includes high risk critical workers in agriculture, public transit, grocery stores, corrections, law enforcement and more. People 16 years and older who are pregnant or have a disability that puts them at a high risk will also be eligible. 
Meanwhile, members for Idaho's COVID-19 Vaccine Advisory Committee will vote tomorrow on who will be included in the next group of the vaccine rollout. The plans can be approved, modified, or rejected by Governor Brad Little. For option A, people 16 to 44 with at least one medical condition will be eligible for the vaccine for two weeks. After that, all Idahoans in the same age group will be eligible. Option B would alternate between age groups with at least one medical condition and age groups regardless of medical conditions. We're just getting started here on the news at 10. Could your latest tax return change your eligibility for the stimulus check? Our Verify team looked into the claim to see who's able to cash in. But first, this is our team, our time, our town. The Zags have made history this season and are looking to chase down some more records. Before we go to break, we'll leave you with some Gonzaga basketball trivia. According to ESPN Stats and Info, Gonzaga has beaten seven teams over Ken Palm's current top 25 teams. Those seven wins are the most by any team in the NCAA.